247 24/7. You're listening to the hottest internet station from beautiful Saline in southeastern Michigan. Around the world at sunskymysteries.com. This is the 2009 top 10 webcam in the world winner. This is S E T B. Well, there we go. Hopefully everybody can hear and see what I am doing. Pardon me while I go through a couple of my normal evening routines here. Um, I don't know if anybody is watching the show tonight live. If they're not, that's fine. We are, in fact, just doing a quick test show here. Oh, let me see. We are uh, doing a quick test show because we now have, believe it or not, the ability to stop using the voice over IP phone system as well as all of the other uh, internet phone connection um, schemes that we were using simply because we're having we've been having a great difficulty getting them to work if you watch the show for any length of time you know that that is the case um, basically the reasoning is this a stream the stream on the audio side Incidentally, we are using the high-capacity audio side for doing the live streaming now. I will explain in a moment. So you will, uh, when you go to the page for the audio streaming, there is the Windows Media Streaming and there is the Flash Streaming. At the start of the show, we are going to shut off the Windows Streaming and start up the Flash Stream. Um, on the video side you will notice that we are now no longer using a stereo signal everything is going in mono that is because it is easier to um, easier for you to hear and easier for me to um, make it more listenable and enjoyable for the audience you'll be able to hear things more now the audio stream and the video stream both of them they have what's called a buffer built into them. They buffer approximately 10 to 15 seconds of the sound and send it out in packets. And when you listen to it on the internet, your computer is buffering the sound as it comes in. When you are using a voice over IP system, whether it be um, Skype or any other type of uh, VOIP, uh, there is no buffering. It's a straight shot through. So if there are any glitches, any hiccups, any, um, any packet loss, anything like that, you get the loss of the quality of the call. Now, a lot of our guests have been very controversial, and somebody, some organization, or some individuals have been messing with that VOIP signal. We have seen that numerous times with a lot of our guests. So... We are now using our landline. That's right. We now have a landline. Let me see here. There we go. You can hear that we, in fact, now use a regular land phone. This is uh, one of our um, high-power cordless phones has about 12 hours of talk time in the battery, so that's not a problem. We go from the headphone out into the sound board, so everything should be um, just fine when um, we're doing this over the air. And that's why we switched to mono, because I could only have half a signal, half a duplex, if you will, coming out of the phone. So we switched to monorail so that it sounds like it's coming out of two speakers to you, even though it's only coming out of one side of my headphone to me, which is really weird. 
So my voice is coming out of this side, and the caller's voice, or the guest voice, is coming out here. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it should work just fine. Of course, we have the usual um, sounds and, um, and uh, songs and everything else. So that's what's going on. We um, have a little bit of news I'd like to uh, bring to you for tonight. Um, apparently, uh, over there at the Supreme Court, all of you know that um, the, they're having the, um, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear the uh, case on the um, Obamacare, as everybody calls it, the, um, the National Health Care Act. And they are now having the um, hearings before the Supreme Court, the arguments, if you will. Um, the uh, two of the justices today, Justices uh, uh, Alito and, let me see, uh, two of the justices, I'm looking for the um, Alito and uh, Breyer. Alito and Breyer. Um, they were laughing at Obama's attorney today. On the, uh, here's the article. This comes from uh, Talking Points Memo. This is uh, by Sahil Kapoor. Uh, this comes from, this was filed at 1.39 p.m. this afternoon. So you probably haven't heard this story on any of the uh, talk radio programs. On the first day of health care reform arguments before the Supreme Court, two justices needled a top Obama lawyer for simultaneously calling the fine that would be paying under the law, under the law for not purchasing both a penalty and a tax. The confusion arises because the administration ar administration's argument that the power to enforce the individual mandate is rooted in Congress's taxing power, but the mechanism itself is designed to be a penalty, not a revenue-generating policy. Now, today they heard uh, the arguments that they heard today. Let me see if I can explain this to you. I will uh, attempt to throttle down my brain enough to make it understandable for all of us. Um, there was a uh, Supreme Court uh, ruling back in the 1800s that said uh, nobody can sue the government regarding a tax unless that tax is collected. So in other words, in, um, regarding ob the uh, health care issue, the Supreme Court was considering whether or not to invoke this particular uh, ruling as to um, whether or not they can even hear the case because no taxes under the penalty phase of it have been collected as yet. And that is what the lawsuit is about, is about the mandate, forcing people to enter into a contract when only one side of that contract is willing. In other words, you are being forced to enter into a contract with the government, whether or not you want to. And that's uh, unconstitutional. Now, they were considering this because if this is a tax, if the penalty is actually a tax, then they quite conceivably have to kick the can down the road until 2015 simply because they can't hear arguments about a tax until that tax has been collected. And the Supreme Court said today, well, you know what, we're going to go ahead and hear this case because <laughs> there ain't no taxes involved. So, apparently, the, uh, this is, if you're against the uh, health care issue, if you're uh, part of the 71% of Americans that really think that this is a bad, bad idea and is going to lead most certainly to totalitarianism, um, this is good news because the Supreme Court did not invoke the ruling that was made in the 1800s about this being a tax. So apparently the Supreme Court at this point does not think that this is a tax.
U.S. Solicitor General Donald Varelli used the phrase tax penalty multiple times to describe the individual mandate's backstop. He portrayed, portrayed the fee as a penalty by design, but one that functions as a tax because it's collected through the tax code. General Varelli, today you are arguing that the penalty is not a tax. Tomorrow you are going to be back and you will be arguing that the penalty is a tax said Justice Samuel Alito, one of the few laugh lines through the 90 minutes of arguments on Monday, which really is kind of funny. They're there today going, ah, you know, this is a, uh, uh, this is, uh, this is a penalty, and then tomorrow they're going to say, well, it's a tax. Because you see, if they called it a tax today, the Supreme Court would have said, we can't hear anything until 2015. So they called it a penalty, so the Supreme Court can continue to hear it, and then tomorrow they're going to call it a tax, and the Supreme Court has decided to go ahead and hear it because it's not a tax. So they're going to switch back and forth. A little tag team there. Tag team misinformation. The remark underscores the fine line the White House is walking in its argument. On one hand, it says the backstop is not a tax because that could subject to an anti-injunction act, the focal point of Monday's arguments, and delay a ruling until at least 2015. On the other, they claim that the power to impose a penalty derives from Congress's broad taxing power. That's in part because calling in a tax makes it defending the mandate easier. Congress's power to levy taxes is less in question than its power to require people to do things. So they are attempting to have it both ways. Whether or not the Supreme Court is going to allow that to stand is anybody's guess at this point. But I have a sneaking suspicion that, given today's arguments, the uh, justices are all sitting on their couch right now wondering what in the heck just happened. So, that is how that is uh, um, going to go. Now, Justice Elena Kagan, uh, Obama's um, appointee to the Supreme Court, she was actually the uh, Solicitor General when this law became fact, in fact, she assigned some of the attorneys that are arguing in front of the Supreme Court today, which puts her in a very tough place, and she should have recused herself, but she didn't. Remember, this is the United States 2012. Uh, remember, down is up, up is down, black is white, wrong is right, right is wrong. That's the way things are these days. Justice Elena Kagan asked whether refusing to buy insurance would constitute breaking the law, to which Varelli responded that if people pay the tax, then they are in compliance with the law. That they caught the attention of Justice Stephen Breyer. Why do you keep saying tax, Breyer interjected, to even more laughs? The justices, particularly the four Democratic appointees and Justice Antonin Scalia, appear to be skeptical that the fine constitutes a tax, which means that if it's not a tax and it's a penalty, then there's a big issue with this entire health care scheme. Anyways, enough about that. We are um, going to be covering that a lot more. Um, in the battle, I don't know if you've heard about this, uh, down there in, I believe, Georgia, there is a uh, city called Roswell. Not the Roswell that the Flying Saucers crashed at, but the Roswell in Georgia. There was a uh, fella that had chickens, and uh, he got in a lot of trouble with the city because the city said uh, he shouldn't uh, be having chickens, and uh, he had chickens all along, and then they changed stuff back and forth. Anyways, it was a big mess. Uh, he killed himself today by blowing up his house because, you see, the city put him in jail, because he had the chickens in the first place, and he couldn't pay his mortgage, so his home went into foreclosure, and that caused even more trouble for him. So, he blew himself up today. Blammo. So, essentially, the city drove him to killing himself. Um, let me see. Um, uh, anyways, um... That's uh, a bad thing. That's um, crazy. Um, in other news, you notice that we don't have the uh, screen 
preview on the video side tonight because I didn't just ha I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the show, so I'm just kind of winging it tonight. We're just kind of doing it off the top of our heads. Um, the seismic servers that they list, the live seismic internet server uh, station, is acting very weird. That is uh, earthquake dot usgs dot gov. You can find the um, the streaming earthquake monitors there. All of them are going completely insane. You know how they usually go like this. Well, they're all like going like this. All of the um, the uh, earthquake um, se uh, seismometers. And that's because the earthquake that was in Chile, um, I think it was either yesterday or the day before, I think it was like a 7.5, another one down there, it's actually made the entire planet ring somehow. It happened once before, I believe, during the last Chile earthquake, and the planet is ringing like a bell. So all of the seismic monitors around the planet are going absolutely bonkers until the ringing stops. Um, in other news, I'm just trying to fill up some time here so it seems like I actually have a point to make. Uh, in other news, can pond scum save you from $5 a gallon gas? In the spectrum of alternative fuel sources, biofuel made from algae is perhaps the most easily mocked. But how could the slimy green muck that grows in your aquarium and washes up on the beach be the future cornerstone of American energy independence. For those of you that don't remember, let me play this. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. We're making new investments in the development of gasoline and diesel and jet fuel that's actually made from a plant-like substance. Algae. And there you go. That was um, the president talking about a plant-like substance called algae. Algae actually is a plant. Um, so, when President Obama stood before the University of Miami recently and said algae could provide up to 17% of our transportation fuel, we wanted to know, is he right? This comes from Mother Jones News, by the way. I haven't read the article yet, so who knows how this article is going to go. In February, President Obama announced the Department of Energy would allocate $14 million in new funding to develop transportation fuels from algae. The Department of Energy is already supporting 30 such projects, together worth $94 million. So let's look here. That's $108 million total now. Click through the map to learn more about these projects. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's the end of the article. Well, that's nice. I thought, uh, here's what we found out. They found out nothing. Wow. <laughs> uh, that wasn't even worth reading. <laughs> oh, boy. The um, NSA has a new surveillance system that can uh, compare your face against 36 million others in one single second. Uh, let's see, they're uh, um, generating false memories in lab mice. You know, watching this show is kind of like a false memory, too. Um, let's see here. There was a solar storm that... Uh, let me see here. Let me bring this up. This is from Cyorg. Dot com. That's P H Y S O R G dot com. That's physics org is what basically what it's called. The recent flurry of eruptions on the sun did more than spark pretty auroras around the poles. NASA funded researchers say the solar storms of March 8th through the 10th dumped 
enough energy in Earth's upper atmosphere to power every residence in New York City for two years. This is the biggest dose of heat we've received from a solar storm since 2005, uh, said Martin Mezelak of NASA's Langley Research Center. It was a big event and shows how solar activity can directly affect our planet. I know what you're asking yourselves. You're asking yourselves, is that why uh, we've been so warm here in uh, North America for the past month or so? Not entirely. The uh, jet stream is doing some amazingly crazy things. In other words, there is a, um, let me see if I can describe it without actually trying to pull it up on the screen because we do have an audio side. This is also a good practice for me uh, verbally describing things. The jet stream um, currently is uh, coming through the Gulf of Alaska going along the Alaskan coast. It is coming down straight down the uh, west coast of the United States where it is going down towards uh, the Baja Peninsula. At the Baja Peninsula it's making a U-turn going up the east side of the Rockies until it gets up into Canada and then goes up through Canada before it dips down again over the Atlantic Ocean, the northern Atlantic Ocean. This has the effect of drawing up warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico, which is why it has been very warm in the, uh, basically from uh, the Dakotas eastward in the United States. That's why it's been so warm. As uh, the solar storms, the energy that they released in the upper atmosphere may have had an effect on that, but not as much of an effect as you would think, even though they did dump um, more energy than we received since 2005 and could power every home in New York City for two years. Now, it occurs to me that instead of um, trying to get uh, fuel from algae, maybe they could find out a way to harness the power coming from the sun. Um, I'm sure they're doing experiments on that, but um, I don't know. I don't know why they're not doing that. These guys drive me crazy sometimes, but uh, you guys know that. Now, tomorrow night on the show, and I really should mention this stuff at the top of the show. i got to uh, remember to start doing that. I'm uh, trying to get away from using a script. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a gentleman on by the name of Corey Williams. He is a genuine Hollywood actor and a science fiction author. And I wanted to talk to him because, well, sometimes even I, Bill Zam, need to relax. I know that's hard to believe, but it's true. So, when I relax, I like to read the kinds of books that I like, which is usually science fiction novels or no novellas or even short stories. Um, Williams wrote uh, three books and um, I read one completely last night. I started at four in the afternoon and ended up at nine o'clock at night uh, finishing the book. Very interesting. He is a very good author. So Corey Williams is going to be on the show and he's going to talk to us about the books that he wrote uh, where his inspiration came from, his life, that sort of thing. Uh, what, what, you know, what sort of thing does the the the, the modern um, modern Hollywood actor, you know, have? Um, what, what's their life like? Um, we hear the only thing we hear is the talking heads telling us about what it's like in Hollywood, or hear the uh, the A-list crazy people talk about uh, stoning people or how they're going to leave if George Bush gets elected. And, they never left, and that sort of thing. So we wanted to talk about an a talk to an average Joe in the street type of Hollywood actor, and, uh, who is also a very good author, by the way. We're going to be talking to him about his books and where he came up with the ideas and everything, and see what's going on for real in Hollywood. So that's what's coming up tomorrow night when we will be using our landline to do the show. <laughs> Try and shut that down, you bastards. Anyways, that's about it for tonight's show. Um, looks like the recording is going well. Looks like all of the streaming 
is going very well. Let me make sure that it's still, it is in fact still streaming. And oh my gosh, the video side is still streaming too. Well, two for two ain't bad. And we're recording the show too, so we'll have a podcast of me doing nothing but muttering into a microphone once again. So until tomorrow night, my name is Bill Zam. Thanks for showing up. And if you're anything like me, whoo, boy, you need to get some help. See you guys tomorrow night. Uh, and don't forget to stop by for our Tuesday Night Inquisition.